Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me for this segment, we have Sergey Gorbanov, co-founder and CEO of Axelar, a decentralized blockchain interoperability network, to discuss why traditional and decentralized finance systems can be more than the sum of their parts when they integrate. Sergey is an assistant professor at the University of Waterloo, received a PhD in cryptography from MIT, and has pioneered the development of multiple cryptographic standards, publishing several uh, read peer-reviewed papers. Sergey, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Hey, thanks for having me. You got it. The, the latest proposed crypto bill from the U.S. Senate on the need for regulating DeFi companies like banks. How would this affect DeFi investors and what considerations should investors think of? Yeah, I mean, I think if you take a step back and look at the global uh, markets, right, then we're seeing just con continued increase in demand for decentralized technologies, right? So people don't trust uh, their government so much anymore. You know, US dollar is continuing to go into, you know, more and more debt. And people want to control their freedom, be able to take their assets, move, and so on and so forth, right? So centralized players like Coinbase, Binance, and many others also kind of understand the need for decentralized protocols, right? And uh, we've seen them as a result kind of growing their own chains so back to your question, uh, what is the what do the regulations do? Of course, they're continuing to you know introduce some effects, but if you take a step back, uh, we know that there's going to be a need for more and more decentralization uh, throughout all this. And I hope the regulations understand that um, you know regulating decentralized protocols is very different than regulating kind of centralized actors. So then, with the outflows that we're seeing in centralized crypto exchanges, is there an opportunity for decentralized exchanges to take over some of this volume? Yeah, for sure. We continue to see growing usage of decentralized platforms like Uniswap, DYDX, and many other decentralized protocols. Right at the very core of what they do is that they allow you to do the same functions as you could be doing in a centralized venue but doing it in an open and transparent and decentralized way, right? Connectivity between all of these different assets and platforms is critical. And so we're working with a lot of these partners like Uniswap, you know, DYDX to make sure they have seamless user experiences and seamless interactions across multiple chains. Well, let's talk more about that. Traditional and decentralized finance systems can be more than the sum of their parts when they integrate. Give us some examples of what you mean by that. Yeah. So I think if you take a step back and understand that kind of throughout the evolution, kind of humans tend to trust more and more algorithms, right? So what do I mean by, by actually this? Um, so today, I'm sure many of you have had examples of the conversations with your friends where, you know, somebody would say a fact and then you say, oh, I'm not sure this is a correct fact. Let me Google to verify it. Right. So when you Google to verify something, you're going online and you're trusting kind of system and a set of algorithms to give you the information that you want. Right. So now that's not the case with a lot of financial primitives. Right. And a lot of financial instruments where, um, you know, many centralized actors like FTX, like like Celsius kind of promise to do certain actions, but they never delivered on those. Right. And so kind of decentralization, DeFi, all the DEXs and everything else that you've seen is the way to solve that. Right. It's the way to put algorithms in control and allow users to be able to trust the algorithms to give their assets, have full custody of their assets whenever they need to, as opposed to trusting kind of humans and centralized systems. So we're going to continue to see these trends towards kind of humans trusting more of cryptography, mathematics and open and decentralized systems behind these DeFi primitives. And um, um, you're already working with established financial firms like MasterCard, also working with Microsoft Azure to expand that interoperability. Tell us more about those partnerships. Yeah, so at Axel, essentially what we're trying to do is to simplify developer and user experiences interacting with multiple Web3 technologies by seamlessly connecting all of them together, right? Um, so interoperability and some of the things we're trying to do is not a new topic, right? So today, you know, right now, we're live on the air. We have video streams across multiple networks, multiple geographic regions, multiple devices that are all coming together, right? So this is an example of interoperability that we, you know, so used to. Same thing whenever you're sending an email, right? You're sending an email from, you know, your mobile phone to somebody's corporate email account. There's all kinds of interoperability standards and protocols and systems that are there to facilitate it, but you don't think about it. It's all seamless for you. It's all on the back end process, right? And so we want uh, the interactions with Web3 for developers and users to be as seamless as that, right? And so that's what we do kind of an Axler, uh, connecting everything together, unifying through secure and seamless interoperability to help the space be more accessible and more usable for everyday users. 
And Circuit, that's what's so interesting about it, because to your point, interoperability is not a new subject, right? But it seems to still Correct. be the most important goal of the space in which XLR sits. We're, we're trying to figure out what that looks like, where all these traditional and decentralized exchanges have the capability to interoperate with each other. So while it's not a new subject, it still remains to be one of the most important ones out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, unfortunately, that the history of uh, the development of Web3 technologies is, is a little bit reversed with the history of the internet, right? Where on the internet, we've seen many decades of research and development into these interoperability protocols until applications like email, you know, could benefit from them. Uh, in the blockchain and Web3 space, we are seeing a lot of demand from decentralized protocols like you know, Uniswap and so on and so forth. But a lot of the protocols are still being developed and that's what we're pioneering at Axler. Okay, we appreciate the insight, Sergey. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thanks for having me.